Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Lecture 6, Know Thyself. Now you might think you already know yourself pretty well, and perhaps you do. But most of us living in the world and interacting with the people around us have very little time left to actually look inwards and find out who we really are. So busy, are we? just dealing with what's going on in the world around us. This harks back to an earlier lecture in which the importance of seeing your inner reality as being your primary reality and the outside world as your secondary reality. Because in a very real sense, what's inside you is a small but perfectly formed version of the outside world. The ancient Greeks at the Oracle of Delphi talked about the microcosm and the macrocosm. The macrocosm is the universe, the world out there. The microcosm is what's inside. And they believed, and there's good reason to believe, that that microcosm is in fact a perfect replica of the macrocosm. And they went so far as to say that you could not know the macrocosm directly. You could only know the macrocosm by coming to know your microcosm, by knowing yourself from within. Once you know yourself, you then understand the world outside. But you can't understand the world outside until you know yourself. So little wonder that the idea of know thyself should be so important in the process of self-actualization. So SA people ask themselves the big questions really. Who am I? What am I? What's good and what's bad? The nature of good and evil. Where am I going? What's my mission in life? All of the things that we really should be coming to terms with, but very often don't in the hurly-burly and trivia of everyday life. Opening yourself up in this way means uh, recognizing where your defenses and your blockages are, the things which stop you from progressing. When you look within, you can see what is making you tick. You can see, you stand back and watch yourself. You observe yourself thinking, the person you are as you go about your daily life, and as you observe, you start to notice patterns, patterns of behavior, how you will behave in a certain situation. You'll come to realize maybe that wasn't the best way to act in that situation. And with that awareness, you then become able to take on a better, more constructive way of doing things, for example. So SA people consciously live their lives and there's the emphasis there on the conscious or being aware. We have a highly evolved brain capable of this meta-awareness, awareness about being conscious, being conscious of being conscious. That part of our brain evolved in humans only fairly recently and humans are arguably the only creatures on the planet who are able to think that way because other creatures, even the other primates, don't have that same evolved part of the brain. So we are capable of this higher consciousness, but we don't always exercise it. It doesn't just happen automatically. We have to cultivate it. So SA people consciously cultivate that higher awareness bringing awareness into everything they do so that they can choose what is the right way to uh, live in order to live well and to live happily and what is to be avoided. The opposite of this way is the uncritical mindset of the person who simply cruises along through life making bases, uh, choices rather, based on comfort and security or habit, really, just force of habit. 
and also based on the conventional wisdom of the people around them, of the society in which they live. These folk don't know themselves. They're too focused on what is outside and what people are thinking out there to know themselves. So the self-actualized person understands that this inner awareness and this heightened inner awareness of who and what they are and where they're heading in life is a key feature or key ingredient of the self-actualizing person. So that's Know Thyself. Stay with me for the next lecture, which is about accepting the world the way it is.